If our next guest says the current sell-up in stocks sparked by that coronavirus should be viewed as a buying opportunity. Joining us now, president of Payne Capital Management, Ryan Payne. So, Ryan, listening to what Emily had to say, and a lot of people have been drawing the parallel, right, between yes. now and SARS. Are you looking at any kind of historical precedent, or are you just kind of trying to judge it by what's going on at the moment? Well, I mean, the, if you look at history, we've had about 18 uh, virus outbreaks since 1981. And the S&P six months later averaged 7% on the upside. So if you look at it from a precedent standpoint, statistically, market gets over it uh, and ends up you know, keeping with the trend. And we know the trend has been wildly bullish you know, for the last year or so, even going into this year. When you look at those kinds of uh, past experiences, though, are there sure. specific sectors that will outperform once we're, we're past the hysteria of the fear? That I don't know. That's a good question. But I do know that if you look at a situation right now where you have essentially around the world, you have, you know, central banks have been easing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you look at globally right now, I mean, manufacturing is starting to pick up and things like that. Cyclicals tend to outperform uh, in that type of environment. So, you know, looking at things that maybe haven't done as well, like financials, um, energy stocks, if you're really bold, I think all that stuff's really good value here. Julian, you want to get in? We, we would agree with that, actually. So, so from, from, from our point of view, we don't think the sell-off is over. We would be a little bit more cautious about adding to positions here. Um, and, and if you look at it, going back to the last segment, it is absolutely correct that the comparison with SARS is not really a fair mm. comparison because essentially you were at the, the turn in what was the two-year tech bubble bear market, okay? Everything was depressed. A recession was only, call it, nine months in the rearview mirror, Big, big difference. Um, to us, the more apt comparison might be uh, to e Ebola in late 2014, where you were near a market high, the consumer was just starting to get his or her wind in, in, in their sales, and, uh, and, and that was much more muted. You point out, and I want to get to the Treasury yields and what's going on with the 10-year. Yes. Uh, there was discussion when we were coming to this year, you know, or not too long ago, that we might be back above a yield of 2% on the 10-year. We're not there. We're actually falling. And you point out that that could actually be a good indicator for equities as we go forward. Yeah, it's the uh, proverbial Tina. There yeah. is no alternative. Um, and I just look at it pragmatically. It's like, okay, I'm getting less than an inflation return on a treasury right now. I don't know why anyone would put money there. And if you look at retail investors last year, they put more money into bonds, took out of stocks with it going up 30% while interest rates are going down. Whereas right now in a global portfolio, I'm getting a 4% dividend. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You know, stocks are such better value right now. Hey, Ryan, let me ask you a question about putting money into the market though right now. It, yes. Is this, you know, with prices no doubt lofty, right? I mean, do you, do you put everything in right now or do you sort of dollar average in? I think, well, first off, let's, let's look at that point for a second there. Growth stocks are probably overvalued here, right? I mean, you look at technology, obviously, you're at, you're at heightened valuations, which could go higher right now. But if you're pretty discerning right now, I mean, value stocks trade at a discount to the market right now. Global stocks are trading dirt cheap. I, you know, I wouldn't discern right now. I would just get invested. I wouldn't wait. You know, I don't know when the bottom's going to be. My crystal ball broke right. like 15 years ago. Yeah. So I think right now you can just get in, take advantage of the dip. We're in a bull market. Um, you're never going to get the pricing perfect. Right. What do, you, what do you think about earnings that we've seen so far, right? It feels like, what, we're about halfway through earnings season, maybe a little bit less than that. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had some mixed numbers. You look at Facebook today to the downside, for example. But generally, we've seen some fairly robust earnings growth. The strategists always get it wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So this quarter, again, you know, they really underestimated where earnings were Sitting next to a strategist, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting mad. So sorry. He's so getting sorry. mad. Look at him. He's all hot and bothered. <laughs> It was Warren Buffett who said, uh, what is it, uh, fortune tellers make strategists look, uh, or strategists make fortune tellers look good. Bad joke. Oh, but no, 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 that was <laughs> always good and even. Uh, not always true. Okay. But no, I, I think that's, <laughs> the thing is that the theme of this bull market is, you know, basically we've really underestimated how good earnings are going to be. In this quarter, it's no <clears> different. <throat> earnings are coming in better than expected. And I just think that this bull market, the trend's going to continue. We've got reasonable GDP growth. You've got surprises in the positive when it comes to earnings. And now you're getting some clarity around trade, which is good for capital expenditure for companies. So it really lines up the year to be a very good year. Okay, thank you.